Hello again from Alation Productions. Uh, today I'm going to show you the process that I'm going to do of finishing up a flange for my sandblasting cabinets. Uh, what I got here so far, this is a flange that I made up uh, using a piece of 3 inch OD by quarter inch wall uh, aluminum pipe and it's about 2 inches long there and I've welded it to this uh, quarter inch flange that I machined out of a piece of quarter inch plate and that's about uh, just a touch over four inches so we got a flange on here that has about a half inch lip now what we need to do next on this is put some holes in this so I can mount it to the side of my sandblasting cabinet and I'm going to show you how I'm going to do that right now we're going to put three holes in it to correspond to being right in between the welds I have on here to hold the flange in place. What I'm going to do first now is get the flange uh, trued up in the four jaw chuck I have here on my tag lathe. This is the only chuck that will open up large enough to hold the three inch diameter of this flange. And all I'm going to do, I'm going to get the jaws pretty close. I'm going to come in here with my dial indicator. I'm going to take readings off all the points. And I'm going to keep going back and forth and determining the high and low points and making adjustments as needed. As I move the flange around, I can see I got it trued up to about two or three thousandths of an inch. It's not off by very much, and that should work just for the purpose of drilling a few holes to mount it to the side of the cabinet. It doesn't need to be any more accurate than that. So I'm going to take my indicator off, and we're going to disconnect the entire chuck from the lathe. Now next, I'm going to take the entire assembly that I pulled off the lathe, which is trued up, and I'm going to mount it to the center stud on my rotary table. And that's just going to screw into place like that. And now I have it centered up with the rotary table. I'm going to take some junk calipers I have here. I'm going to make a little scribe line at the point inward where I want the hole to be drilled. And then from that point we'll just rotate the table around to do the other two holes on it. Now I'm going to show you how I set up this motion controller for the rotary table. You can see there's a start screen and I'll hit enter. So I hit mode and we want division mode so we'll press the enter button and we'll enter how many divisions do we want so we put zero zero three we want three divisions on this part and we'll hit enter and we're set at our first division which is right here And there you have three perfectly spaced holes. And you see if I hit next again, it'll take us right back to our starting point. Now for one final operation on this part, I want to add a set screw into the side so I can lock the uh, blast gate a little more securely when I place it inside the uh, flange. So I have my mill already set up from the previous one that I did. So I'll just set into my vise like so, lock it down, 
and we're all set to drill the hole first. Now I'm going to uh, attempt to do a tapping operation in my mill too. Uh, I hope to have a video of the mill itself in the future up, but at the moment I'll give you a peek. This is my latest milling machine. This is a Grizzly G0678. This is a large uh, knee type milling machine. And because it's variable speed, uh, I can turn it way, way down and we can attempt uh, some tapping operations if we're very careful with it, which I'll show you right now. We're going to, I'll adjust the speed for you right now. Right before we're running about 780 RPM. And for tapping, we're going to turn it way down. We're going to turn it down to zero. And we're going to bump it up to about as slow as it'll go. We're going to try about 30 RPM. There we go. And you can see it's making about one revolution every two seconds, which should be a good speed for tapping this uh, 1032 hole. And here we have our finished flange all ready for installation. We got the three holes which I'll use to mount to the cabinet. And we have a set screw here which I'll use for uh, securing better to the blast gate. Which looks just like this here. Now this will allow me to turn one cabinet on, turn another cabinet off coming from the same vacuum. And I can adjust the airflow that way too. And it'll fit just like that into the side there with a set screw to help hold it in place. Now one last thing I'm going to need or rather want to have on this flange is to have some sort of gasket to go between the two metal components of the flange and the cabinet. So what I'm going to do I've got a little circle cutter here from uh, Ulfa brand I got at my local hobby shop and this has come in handy quite often for cutting different gaskets out of thin material and such. So the first circle we want to match up with the outside of the, ga uh, the flange here and that's going to be uh, about four inches. So we'll set our cutter here for two inches because we're looking for the radius of that. And on this sheet of foam which I have as a scrap we'll find out there and there are good points for cutting. And we'll just give it a couple spins here and it'll cut nice and cleanly through the foam. Still hanging up here. There we go. And we got that for the outside. And now we need the inside cut to match up. So the inside is two and a half inches. So we'll take our cutter and we'll take half of that, which will be an inch and a quarter. And we'll use that to cut the inside. And we'll use our same point that we used for the outside. And likewise, we'll give her a couple light spins and let it cut through the foam. I believe this is about a three millimeter thick sheet of, um, this is just craft foam you can find from uh, different arts and crafts stores, stuff like that. It should suffice to create a good uh, vacuum tight seal once the two are clamped together. And there we go. 
I'll just punch the holes out later or I can just use the screws even just tear through it and it'll work for clamping on to the cabinet and giving a very good vacuum tight seal to it. And here's what the finished flange looks like all mounted to my cabinet. Now I have something to mount the blast gate to and in turn I'll mount the vacuum hose feeding into that. And I'll have a splitter farther down at my vacuum so I can split the vacuum between either the two cabinets that I have. Uh, as always, thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed watching. Please don't for forget to like and subscribe. And uh, if you have any comments or questions, leave them below. I'll try to answer them. If you have any suggestions on what you'd like to see in the future, I'd be glad to hear that too. Uh, until next time.